April 30th, in the year of our Lord, 2022. Mark it on your calendars, folks. It was a historical night for boxing. Let's talk about it. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Hey, hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hey, what's up with it, family? It's Hot Boxing Minute, your favorite pharmaceutical engineer turned boxing analyst. Back at you with the realness, of course, as only I know how to bring it. And we're going to talk about the two fights tonight that really made history. I know y'all want to hear about Oscar Valdez and Shakur Stevenson, but y'all, we got to talk about history. Madison Square Garden, the undisputed lightweight women's champion of the world. Katie Taylor, out there from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, fought the fighting pride of Puerto Rico, New York City's adopted child, Amanda Serrano. What an amazing fight. I'm sorry, y'all. We got to talk about it. And I hope y'all watched it. I hope you guys watched it. That fight was so very important for boxing. Let me talk about women in combat sports, y'all. MMA with Ronda Rousey in the UFC. Dana White managed to build an entire business enterprise when there was no talent pool for Ronda Rousey to fight against. There was absolutely no reason why they could have beat us to have a mainstream boxing women's thing going on in boxing. Well, they did. And the glass ceiling was shattered out there in Madison Square Garden. It was a capacity crowd. The crowd was going bonkers. It was a pro-Irish crowd, a pro-Puerto Rico crowd, a pro-women's crowd, a pro-boxing crowd. Y'all, when it comes to fights, it's very difficult to create a storyline. And it compels fights. It makes fights historical. Very rarely do you see fights that have that kind of a storyline to it. Sold out. Uh, one of the quickest selling events in Madison Square Garden's 140-year history. Pre-sale tickets for sure. First women event where they make millions of dollars. They both got paid seven-figure paychecks. All the celebrities were there. Layla Ali was in the crowd. Of course, all the women champions in boxing were there. Y'all, it was a historical event. And the fight itself, amazing. Some tea, hold on. Suffering from a little bit of a sinus infection, if y'all couldn't notice. The fight itself, Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor put on such a magnificent fight, y'all. Their faces were all beat up and there was blood flying at their face. What an amazing fight. I would have given Katie Taylor, I'd say the first three or four rounds. She was using her technique, throwing her shots off, getting out of the way, and just kind of making Amanda Serrano chase her around the ring. Well, after that fourth round, Amanda Serrano started to catch up, was applying pressure, and she almost got Katie Taylor out of there in the sixth. You got to give it up to Katie Taylor. That is one tough cookie, y'all. Katie Taylor was taking severe amounts of abuse in the sixth round, and she was basically out on her feet. She was holding on for dear life. I am surprised she did not hit the ground. If you didn't know, neither Amanda Serrano or Katie Taylor have ever hit the ground in their careers. So Katie Taylor manages over the course of the next few rounds to get her bearings, but she's still getting tagged pretty clean by Amanda Serrano. It goes to the scorecards. Going into the scorecards, I had it as a draw. In the end, it was a split decision in favor of Katie Taylor, and I'm not against that decision. For those of y'all that saw that fight, what did you think about the decision? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Y'all know I love to get your opinions on this stuff. Everyone was mad. I saw people in my comment sections on TikTok talking about Amanda Serrano got robbed. Y'all, these close fights like that, they always have people screaming robbery. Regardless of what, I thought it was a very close, well fought. I mean, it was an amazing fight, straight up, you guys. To see a fight with momentum shifts like that, there was no um, knockdowns, but there was definitely enough momentum sways to keep everyone captivated watching it. These girls were both going for broke, you guys. Something a lot of men don't even do in fights. Really. These men play pitter-patter, get scared to really engage, and these two were not backing down for anything. It was a beautiful display of the sweet science. The event and the energy unforgettable you guys it was an amazing momentous experience to watch on tv i really wish i would have gone but i'm saving up my money for future trips in the future i just got back from europe anyways hats off to katie taylor for winning that split decision in a hard-fought fight against amanda serrano a lot of people are mad katie taylor is still the undisputed lightweight champion of the world amanda serrano gets her second professional loss i don't know what's next for katie taylor she's 35 years old she has climbed the top of the mountain and done everything she can do for the sport of women's boxing. She has given her life, blood, sweat, and tears into the sport of boxing. And I think at 35 years old with that win against Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor might just likely hang up her hat and call it a career. Really, folks, what else is there for Katie Taylor to do? Anyways, let's switch gears for a second. I'm sure Amanda Serrano will probably still compete, but 
Let's talk about that fight out there in Las Vegas. Y'all know I was rocking with Oscar Valdez. I was biased on that one. I can't help it. I've been rocking with Oscar Valdez for years. I've seen him pull off miracles a number of times. So I was going for the underdog. I'm so happy I don't gamble on fights, y'all. Um, I don't advise anybody to spend money on gambling. That's not really my thing. But I think the odds were like plus 800 in favor of Oscar. Man, he was he was pretty much resoundingly picked to be the guy to lose that fight. Shakur Stevenson came out and essentially put on a master class. He kept Oscar Valdez at the end of his jab for the entire fight. I gave Oscar Valdez three rounds, y'all. I gave him round three, round five. No, round three, round seven, and round eight. I did a live afterwards on TikTok and a lot of people were mad at me, but it played out exactly as you thought it would have played out. In my head, I was thinking maybe Oscar Valdez would pull off the crazy upset and shock the world. But he didn't. Shakur Stevenson, my goodness. Shakur Stevenson is probably what you call a generational talent. I don't see anybody in the 130-pound division that's really going to give Shakur any problems. The only really heads heads left for Shakur, Val, uh, Shakur Stevenson at 130 are the IBF champion, Kenichi Ogawa, who only has a powerful right hand. And then there is no belt in the other sanctioning body, the one that Roger Gutierrez and Chris Colbert were supposed to fight over. And then it ended up, the apple cart got overturned when Henry Luis, when, is it Henry Luis Garcia? The Dominican guy that beat up Chris Colbert. Yeah, so I don't know what's next for Shakur Stevenson. Um, as far as what, what's next for Shakur Stevenson, I don't know. I think he might be too big for that 130 frame. I really do. I think he might just move up. Like, in my opinion, what's next for Shakur is that he moves up to lightweight because he's just too big for 130. He vacates his belts, and then everyone else is left at 130 to scramble for what belts are left because he only has two of the belts. There's two more belts, and I can still easily see Oscar Valdez becoming a champion. So what's next for Oscar Valdez? Hey, one loss does not define an entire career. I am not some Gen Z noob to boxing, so I know better than to define a person's career by one loss. I think Shakur Stevenson vacates and moves up to lightweight, and I think Oscar Valdez becomes a champion again because really, outside of Shakur Stevenson, I don't really see anybody else at super featherweight that can really give Oscar Valdez super problems. I really don't. So what do you think is next for Oscar Valdez? Let me know in the comments section, y'all. Let's chop this one up. Anyways, it was a great fight. Hats off to Shakur Stevenson, who I think is going to be the next generational talent. I think it lightweight. I don't know who gives him a problem. You already know Mayweather is most likely not going to let Tank Davis anywhere near him. You've got George Cambosis doing his thing with Devin Haney. So we have to see how that all plays out. A bunch of fun stuff going on. And the energy in Las Vegas was nowhere near what it was at Madison Square Garden. I'm sorry if I upset y'all by staying so focused on the Serrano Taylor fight. That was history. That was amazing history. And the energy in Las Vegas did not match what was going on in New York City at all. Justifiably so. I tried to tell y'all that that Amanda serrano Katie Taylor fight was going to be historical. Anyways, to those of you that saw the fights and the undercards, there was a lot of them, you guys. I don't have the time to go over it. We saw Keyshawn Davis do very, very well. We saw Liam Smith beat uh, Jesse Vodigas and probably Jesse Vodigas' last fight. We saw Francois Cruz Desern become the undisputed super middleweight champion. Y'all, there was a lot of fights and I'm not going to spend 30 minutes talking about all these fights. Anyways, let me know what y'all think about Oscar Valdez and Shakur Stevenson in their future, Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor in their future. In the comment section, y'all, hit follow if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button. Throw a comment in the comment section, y'all. Anyways, this is Hot Boxing Minute. For those of you that have kept up with this, for this whole duration of this video, thank you, one love, and I'll catch you on the next one.